Hi everybody, I'm here today in Chiang Mai, Thailand with Dr. Nawat Watanachai. We're at the APA CRS meeting today and we have a very interesting topic that Dr. Nawat talked about today. And I think it's really important for all of us to sort of explore this a little bit further. I know for me, when I see my post-operative patients within the first week, I'm always worried about an infectious possibility. So how do I distinguish um, between other non-infectious etiologies such as TAS um, and endophthalmitis in my post-operative patients. Right. Uh, the the major reason that we have this talk about because of this is quite serious. You have to make sure that uh, your case is endophthalmitis or not, because if not, it's going to be dramatically tragedy, <laughs> right? Because of uh, if we treat endophthalmitis too late, it will be possible that uh, the patient's going to lose vision or even uh, losing his desire. Uh, but by the way, the other condition tests, uh, toxic anterior segment syndrome, has come with a fairly uh, about the same uh, with endophthalmitis. The patient's going to have red eyes, a blurry vision, uh, sometimes pain, sometimes watery. Uh, so we have to make sure which is which. Uh, there are some clues that uh, we can distinguish between these two conditions. Endophthalmitis is more likely to have pain, and because endophthalmitis is caused by an infection, it needs time so for germs to, to duplicate and increase the amount of germs in the eye and cause uh, the patient's symptoms. So most of the time, endophthalmitis comes from the, uh, between four to seven days after surgery. And TAS, because it is toxic injury uh, into uh, the eye, especially corneal endothelium uh, that cause corneal become hazy, it's most likely to come on the first uh, one or two days after surgery. Like we do surgery today, on the next morning, if it's become quite red and uh, a lot of tissue reaction in the anterior chamber and uh, some pain and some eyes increased eye pressure, it is more likely to become TAS, uh, not endophthalmitis. But if you have a case that on the next day this looks pretty good, vision 20, 20, 20, 40, my degree of inflammation, you send the patient back home, and on the next one or two days, uh, they come back again with pain, inflammation, reactions. It is more likely to become endophthalmitis. Okay. So when you're evaluating these patients and you're distinguishing between these two entities, which are very different, mm -hmm. um, how do you approach in terms of the initial treatment? Well, in for, the, for an initial treatment, if uh, we are quite sure that it is TAS, we need to control inflammation to prevent uh, corneal to endothelium to permanently damage and uh, comes off with PBK or something else. So if we have uh, an idea that this is a, the case is TAS, you need to put uh, anything to control inflammation, mostly steroid and NSAIDs, drops, uh, everything to calm down inflammation and prevent damage from this inflammation. But if this is uh, endophthalmitis, all of us know what to do. <laughs> okay, well, Dr. Nawat, thank you so much for sharing some of these really important you know, points today with us today here in Thailand. Thank you. You're welcome to Chiang Mai.